Hi everyone, my name is Josh. In this video, I'm going to try and help familiarize you with the various menus, functions, and features of the Nucleus M follow focus system. First, I'm going to go through some of the displays you're going to find on the controllers and the motors. I found being familiar with the info on these screens can help setup go much quicker. Let's start with the hand unit, or the Fizz. Press and hold the tilt to logo to power up a unit. Starting at the top left, you have voltage. The system takes two 18650 batteries, which fully charged should give you approximately 8 volts, maybe 7.8. So if you see this getting down to lower than 7.2, then you're getting close to the minimum safe voltage for your batteries. A suggestion for tilt to here would be to change the naming from V7.4 to 7.4V, since it currently sounds like it's referring to a firmer version. Next up we have recording status. If used with a camera that supports remote triggering, this will indicate if the camera is rolling or in standby mode. Next is an indicator of whether we're in master or slave mode. This should read master if you're using the hand unit or the fizz, and slave if you're using the handle grips. Last along the top row is a visual battery indicator. This seems a bit redundant since we have voltage on the left, but it's there. Next down the line, we have a visual slider along with the letter F to indicate the hand unit focus position. The zoom rocker settings will be labeled Z, and the iris knob settings will be labeled I. You could certainly use the main focus control for any function, but the main control wheel will always be labeled focus in the menu, so just keep this in mind. Beside that, there's a percentage indicator which correlates to torque. 30% means low, 50% is medium, and 90% is high. With all the feedback I've heard about the motors, low torque is plenty, and often even too high for some purposes. Right beside that, there's a number indicating which motor is mapped to the focus function. This could be 1, 2, or 3. If no motor is mapped to this function, it'll show a 0, or maybe D for disconnected. The next line down is LoRa. This letter indicates the range of the wireless system, not necessarily the wireless signal strength. Your instinct might be to just always set this to high. However, if you're staying nearby the motor with the controller, setting this to L or low tells the motor to expect a lower powered signal nearby. This may actually help with reliability. Next is the wireless channel number. You have channels 0 to 15 to choose from, and you may have to try a few if you're having some stability issues. Then you have some information about the positions of your second and third motors if they're in use. You'll get a readout of 0 to 999, as well as a percentage for torque. If you have a motor mapped to the iris control, then you'll see an S at the bottom. This is for zoom speed. If no motor is mapped to the iris control, then the iris knob actually becomes the speed control. Speed adjustment goes from 0 to 99. To adjust the speed of the zoom while the iris motor is engaged, double tap up or down on the main screen. Right now this moves in very small increments, so it would take a while to get to the other end of the range. Hopefully Tilta builds in a menu setting for this in the future. And lastly, there's an indicator of the lock mode, which prevents accidentally bumping it if you don't mean to. Turning the controller on its side, we see Function, Delete, Mark, and Cal. Tap Function twice to switch between Master and Slave mode. Press and hold to engage the lock function. Press and hold again to unlock it. Tap Mark twice to add a mark. The hand unit will vibrate when a mark is hit. You can add up to 10 marks in total. Tap delete twice to remove a mark. The delete button will remove the marks in the reverse order that you added them. To limit the range of the motor once it's been calibrated, you can set A and B points. First find your A point and press and hold mark. The hand unit will vibrate twice. Then move to your B point. Press and hold again. Your range should now be limited to those two positions. Press and hold delete to remove the A-B mark range and go back to normal operation. A note here is I found the AB range on the hand unit to be actually pretty buggy. I've had some display issues where it stops showing me where the current position is on the slider, and sometimes it freezes altogether, and I have to take the batteries out to start the unit again. I really do love this feature, so I hope Tilta improves this in the future. Press and hold Cal to bring up the motor calibration, or navigate up and down to select an individual motor, then press and hold Cal again to confirm. Let's move over to the display on the hand grips. Press and hold the record trigger to power up. On the top left, we have the same voltage readout. Underneath that, we have the LoRa or the wireless range indicator, followed by the wireless channel. Next, you should see a K and a J, 
K for knob and J for joystick. If you see an S here, it means that there's no motor currently assigned to the knob, so it defaults to the speed control for the joystick. Beside each letter, you should see free. This indicates whether the motor is in normal mode or AB mode. Then you'll see a position readout between 0 and 999. On the far right, there's a number indicating which motor is currently assigned to this function. You should see a small letter beside the motor number. This is telling you which range the knob is set at. There are three options depending on the range switch on the front. Setting this down will always switch to L, the longest range. Rotate the knob fully counterclockwise, then slide the range slider up. You'll now be in M, the medium range. Slide back down to L and rotate fully clockwise, then slide the range slider back up. You'll now be in S, the shortest range. At the very bottom, you'll see a T or an R, which indicates whether the unit is transmitting or receiving data. Setting the AB range on either the knob or the joystick is super easy, and I found it quite useful to set the hard limits to either an iris adjustment, going outside to inside, or to limit the range of the motor. First, find your A point of the range, and double tap AB. The LED will start to blink. Now go to the end of your range. Double tap AB again, and the LED will turn solid. To exit AB mode and get back to the full range of the motor, double tap one more time, and the LED will turn off. Let's take a look at the motor display. Starting from the top left, we have voltage. Top right, we have standby or record. There's a few items here I honestly don't know the function of. AF, ER, and RAG. RI seems to jump to 99 when the controller changes position. Next, we have the LoRa or wireless range setting and the wireless channel number. This second number is the motor number. It should be noted that it's actually possible to set more than one motor to the same number. This would allow more than one motor to be controlled by the same controller. On the bottom left, we have a time counter from the last power-up. Then POS gives us our position information from 0 to 999. MOT seems to have something to do with the motor calibration. And CUR is current. I can see it spike up when the motors feel resistance. Then we have a percentage to indicate motor torque. And lastly, RM indicates there's a connection with the controller, and ND indicates no connection. To set up your first motor, connect the motor to the lens, and use the DTAP power cable to send the power to the motor. Press and hold power to turn the motor on. If calibrate on startup is enabled, the motor will begin calibration. If not, press and hold down or cal for five seconds. The motor will rotate to the limits of the lens. Once complete, the red light on the motor will turn from red to white, indicating the motor is calibrated. Next, set the wireless channel by double tapping up or down. To set the motor number, double tap menu, select motor number, choose your number and press enter. Power up the hand unit, press menu, Select wireless, select 2.4G. Here we can choose wireless strength and the channel number. There's a bit of a trick to this. Press enter to cycle through the wireless strength. Press up and down to set the wireless channel. And to confirm these settings, press menu instead of enter. Next, to map the motor number to the focus control, we press menu, select motor, select focus, Select Sync, and select the same motor number that you just set on the focus motor. At this point, the motor should receive a signal from the hand unit. To match these settings on the handles, double tap Menu, select Knob Number, and select the same number as you set for the focus motor. Once you're all set up, you can switch back and forth between the fizz unit and the handles by double tapping Function on the fizz. In Master, the fizz has control, and enslave the handles do. To set up a zoom motor, repeat the previous steps to set the wireless channel. If this is your second or third motor, set the wireless channel on the motor to a different channel than the hand units. The idea is that only one motor is getting wireless information, and the other two are getting it passed through the cable. On the fizz hand unit, press menu, select motor, select iris, 
select sync and select the same number you just set for the iris motor. Match this setting on the handles by double tapping menu, select knob number, and select the same number as you just set for the iris motor. Once you're all set up, you can switch back and forth between the fizz unit and the handles by double tapping function on the fizz. In master, the fizz has control, and in slave, the handles do. To set up a zoom motor, repeat the previous steps to set the wireless channel. Again, if this is a second or third motor, set the wireless channel on the motor to a different channel than the hand units. The idea is that only one motor is getting wireless information, and the other two are getting it passed through the cable. On the fizz hand unit, press menu, select motor, select zoom, select sync, and select the same number as you just set for the zoom motor. You can match these settings on the handles by double tapping menu, select joystick number, and select the same number as you just set for the zoom motor. Once you're all set up, you can switch back and forth between the fizz unit and the handles by double tapping function on the fizz. In master, the fizz has control, and in slave, the handles do. To do a manual calibration for lenses without hard stops. First you'll need a gear ring connected to the lens. Connect your focus motor in line with the lens, but keep the gear teeth disengaged from the lens. Go ahead and power up your motor. If auto calibrate is set, you'll have to turn this off by double tapping menu, select auto cal mode, and select manual start. Power up your fizz hand unit and make sure your focus motor and wireless channel is set correctly. Then go to menu, function, manual cal, and choose focus. Next, set your lens to minimum focus, as well as your fizz controller. Then engage the motor with the gears, and press enter on the fizz. Next, slowly turn your focus control towards infinity, being careful not to go past. Then press enter. Your lens should now be mapped. One thing I did to help with cable organization was to wrap the cables with a color to help identify its function. So red is power, green is a motor control or daisy chain cable, and blue is camera control. One thing I found really useful when making an iris adjustment using the handle grips is to actually map the iris motor to the zoom rocker instead, then set an AB range for the adjustment that I need to make for the shot. Then I just set my speed to whatever speed is ideal for the shot when the zoom rocker is at full. This way I don't have to think about it. I just push forward to open up the lens and it'll stop right at the mark. Another trick I found is you can actually connect the EXT port on either of the controllers directly to the motors. And this bypasses the wireless system altogether. So if you're having interference problems on set, this could save the shot. Another comment I've heard a lot is that the torque of the motors is actually still a little bit high, even on its lowest setting. I also found that the lower the voltage that the motors receive, the lower the torque they're going to deliver. So if you're worried about auto calibration damaging your lenses, you can actually power up the motors directly from the controllers via the EXT cable and bypass the DTAP cable altogether. Then you calibrate with 7.4 volts instead of 14, and then you plug the DTAP cable back in and remove the EXT cable. So I hope this has given you all a good in-depth look at how to navigate your new Nucleus M follow focus system and perform a simple setup. Thanks and happy shooting.